Okay, this video is about uh, a piece of test equipment that uh, the telephone company used to use back when people had landlines. Um, I don't think many people have landlines anymore, but um, this is a bit of vintage gear. It's called a 139-A uh, test set. Uh, it says on here, Bell System Property, not for resale. And so uh, the uh, you couldn't work on your, uh, you couldn't own a telephone, you had to rent it from the from the telephone company, and you couldn't work on your telephones, you had to have somebody come out and do it. Now they did it for free, but you were locked into, uh, locked into them. And so uh, the guy would come out with some equipment. Uh, this is one of those things, you could clip it onto the line and, and test things, we'll show you that. Um, the other one was a little uh, telephone that he had uh, clipped to his belt. And it had a little teeny rotary dial, um, a lineman's telephone. I used to have one of those. Um, I don't know where it went. I don't know if I sold it or it's hidden somewhere. Um, I can't imagine that I sold it, but uh, yeah, maybe I did. Um, anyway, I had one of those. Um, and uh, you couldn't buy these things because they were property of the Bell system. Um, so uh, those lineman telephones, I coveted those when I was a kid. You know, I was probably 10 or something and told my dad, wow, those things are really cool, you know. My, my dad said, oh, oh, I know somebody who, you know, works in a truck, you know, a telephone repairman. I'll, I'll ask him if he's got one that he, you know, can spare or whatever, right? I went, oh, that'd be really cool. So my dad talked to the guy and the guy says, no, nah, I can't get it to you because it's property of the Bell system. He goes, but... Um, he goes, you know, I got one here. He says, uh, if I just left it on the truck here and I walked away and I came back and it was disappeared, you know, well, then I just write an order saying you know, it, it went away, right? So anyway, that's how my dad got one for me and yeah, it was super cool. It was, it was definitely beat up. I, I can see why the guy probably wanted a new one, but, but anyway, that's how I got that. Um, this particular thing I, I, I got, I think, at a, a surplus store. So I don't know how it ended up at the surplus store, but... Um, I knew what it was, so so I bought it. Um, so uh, what does it do? It's got a switch on it, and it's got alligator clips. So you connect this to the line. There's only two wires on telephones, and um, it uh, says that you can't read it uh, on camera here, but it says uh, off, tone, and talk. Um, so let's uh, let's look up here. So the 130A test set, line tone emitter. Uh, so this talks about it. Um, section issue two, November 1974. Um, let's see here. This test set may be used for pair identification. Pair meaning the two wires. Which which pair? A lot of times they open up a box and it's like a hundred different pairs, and you had to figure out which one was which. A short detection, a line verification, a talk battery, open wire detection, tracing detection, uh, ground, uh, cross test, pair detection, continuity, buried service wire identification. So, uh, yep, so there it is. Um, and uh, we'll open it up, take a look at it. Um, so basically you could, oh, here's that lineman's phone. Mine was even an older model than this. Um, so what did it really do? Um, it really just injected a signal. So uh, let's inject the signal. Uh, let's move back out. I don't have a telephone system to inject a signal into, but let's inject it into a speaker. So we will take our clip leads and hook them onto the speaker. And um, we'll go over. So this is just an adapter. Um, it has two connectors that you'd slide onto a, a post in the connection box, and you could clip your alligator leads onto that. And it's just here on a little cord. That was probably put on place by whoever had this. So let's uh, let's turn this on and see if it makes any noise. So that's what it does. It injects the signal. Um, and 
So you can imagine if you had a hundred wires and you're trying to figure out which one went where, you'd hook your phone up to the wires that you're interested in and then you would clip lead these around until you heard the tone and say, oh, those must be the two wires that connect to the telephone. Um, so let's, uh, let's open it up. Okay. It's kind of a, a real heavy ABS plastic. Um, Nicely made. Same material as old telephones were made. And there we go. So we have a captured nut on the, uh, a captured screw on the top. Some foam to hold batteries in. Uh, zoom in on that. So we have uh, batteries here, a little bit of corrosion. Um, and what do we have? We have four signal diodes, some capacitors, um, looks like some more, I don't know what these are, they say 6 volt 20%. I don't know if that's a diode or a capacitor. I think it's a capacitor. Um, so small little capacitors. And uh, this, the switch, and then we have a um, one IC that does all the work, which is a Motorola part, an MC789. Motorola 789. Let's look that up. Well, I couldn't, uh, well, I, I didn't want to spend the time to find the actual data sheet, but I found out what the part is. Um, it's an RTL part. So we, we've talked about TTL parts, we've talked about um, CMOS parts, NMOS parts, things like that. Um, so before there was TTL, which was transistor-transistor logic, there was RTL, which was resistor-transistor logic. So, um, and that's what this part is. It's an old RTL part. And it's just a hex inverter. Uh, so it's like a 7404. Uh, but in RTL, um, not TTL. So it's probably just used as an oscillator. Um, and it's a square wave oscillator. And got these old bullet uh, capacitors. Everything's low voltage. Single sided PC board. Um, and there's a. Um, a neon bulb here, and I'm assuming uh, that neon bulb. There's a window in the uh, in the case here too, so you can see that neon bulb through the uh, uh, through the case, and that was a ring indicator. I think the ring voltage on a uh, normal telephone lines was around 80 volts, um, somewhere around 80, 90 volts, and uh, enough to shock you. Uh, they're not not good to be hanging onto those wires when somebody calls the phone. I really gave you a jolt. Um, I can speak from experience. And um, so that's, I'm sure, what this little uh, neon bulb is doing in there. Um, otherwise, the thing's low voltage, right? It's 3 volt. Everything else is 3 volts. Um, and it just outputs the tone. All right, let's look at uh, our signals here with an oscilloscope. Uh, so, must be AC coupled. Or no, I think my I have my scope is I think my scope is AC coupled. Um, so we're getting a square wave of sorts. Um, remember, there are two tones, so one's going to be a higher frequency than the other. Uh, let's see if we can't capture this. Oops. Okay, so I think this is one frequency and this is another frequency. Looks like the voltage drops a bit when it's on the other frequency. Let's see if we can uh, zoom in on this. Yeah, there we go. We can see the uh, we can see the transition. Okay. Okay. 
narrow it right here. There we go. We can see it good there. So we can see it's a higher frequency here, and then it goes to a lower frequency here. Um, so those are the those are the two tones. So that's what the uh, circuit's doing. Um, pretty interesting. I'm not sure how they swap between the two tones in such a, a simple simple circuit, but it must be some type of uh, diode switching and capacitors that hold the hold the two tones and capacitors that hold the timing of the two tones. So. Uh, pretty interesting. Oh, I thought I'd uh, measure the uh, the tone frequencies also. So the fast ones here are measuring around uh, one and a half kilohertz. And if I move over to the slow ones, they're measuring at about uh, 800 hertz. So it's oscillating between 800 and 1500. Um, anyway, old technology.